writer Amy Krauss Rosenthal explored the importance of clothing choices in a personal experiment, which inspired her to impart some wisdom to these new graduates. This is Amy reading her speech, Commencement Address. Dear Class of 2014, What I want to tell you today revolves around the dress that I am wearing. For those of you who can't see it, I'll describe it. It is a plain black cotton dress. I'm going to tell you a story about this plain black dress and three things I learned while wearing it. The story begins with my quest to wear the same thing for a year. I had been toying with the idea of a super minimalist wardrobe for nearly a decade. I always imagined that having a set daily uniform would feel fabulous and freeing. In hindsight, I'm not sure why I thought this. It's not like I'm well put together. I spend about 10 seconds getting ready every day. In any event, on January 1st of last year, I decided, enough thinking about the uniform experiment, it was time to actually do it. The rules I set for myself were this. I would wear gray pants and a solid black top. Because I like to wear casual, flippy dresses, it was deemed that plain black dresses would also be allowed. These permissible garments remained in my closet. I had enough of each to get by and still be a clean person. Everything else was either given away or shoved into, I mean neatly folded and placed into a black hefty bag, which then camped out in my crawl space for 52 unfashionable weeks. I didn't tell anyone except my family and a couple close friends about this experiment. Why? Because weird. Because who cares? Two, three months into the project, I started having pangs of, oh gosh, this is miserable. But there was no turning back. I knew I was in it for the long haul, both for my own follow-through reasons and also because my teenage daughter was into it in a, that's odd, and I would for sure never do that, but good for you for sticking with your dumb project sort of way. About halfway in, on the eve of heading out of town for a week-long book tour, I decided I was going to be naughty and cheat on my project. It's perfect, I thought. Some people go away on business and cheat on their mates. And while that version is not my thing, this wardrobe treating version is so my thing. I rationalized my planned indiscretions by saying it was good fodder for my experiment. I can't tell you how exhilarating it was for me to pack that night, sneaking into the crawl space and grabbing one pattern dress after the other. The first city on my stop was Minneapolis. Our old babysitter had moved there and showed up at the book signing with her adorable new baby. Of course, I had to take some pictures to send to my kids. Two seconds later, I got a text back from my daughter. What are you doing? Why are you wearing that dress? Question mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. Busted. By a careless text. It was so comically cliche, even down to my quick, frantic reply. I can explain! When I returned home from that trip, I had about five more months to go. Getting dressed was always easy, but never pleasing. I ambled along to the finish line. I woke up on January 1st to the most glorious gift from my husband, a pair of bright yellow jeans hanging in the closet. In the end, after 12 monotone months, the most illuminating thing was this. No one noticed. Can you believe it? Not one single person ever said to me, Amy, why are you wearing those same gray pants and black shirt every time I see you? So now, my three lessons. Lesson one. If you choose to do something difficult, be prepared to deal with the very appealing temptation to quit. Obviously on the spectrum of difficult things, my sartorial silliness is on the trivial side. We all know what qualifies as truly difficult, and we all know that difficult comes in just about every flavor, shape, and size. Heck, even lying there doing absolutely nothing can be difficult. Have you ever seen how many people bolt before Shavasana? Across the board, when it comes to difficult stuff, there's only one aspect that's easy. Quitting. Lesson two. If you choose to cheat, be prepared to be caught. I don't regret my week-long pattern dress affair. It added some extra color to my trip, and the consequences were meager and rather laughable. 
but real ethical flubs invite disgrace to your door. That's a visitor that's both unsavory and hard to kick out. And by the way, truth is so easy to spot. It's always dressed in black and white. Lesson three. If you choose to think that people think about you as much as you think about you, be prepared to be shocked. Please promise me you won't spend your lovely but numbered days on this earth burdening yourself with what other people think. Because guess what? They're not even thinking about you. In fact, don't take it too personally, but they're barely paying any attention at all. Everyone is walking around the star of their own movie, convinced that every action and line they speak is of great importance. While the rest of us are those nondescript extras in the background making weird gestures and mouthing pretend conversations. This information is equal parts humbling, depressing, and liberating. Well, graduates, that's what I've got for you today, along with good luck and this P.S. It is very likely and ridiculously ironic that years from now you will say, you know, I don't remember a word she said, but I remember what she was wearing.